Hey y'all, uh, it's Saturday now, the 11th of February. Yeah, I got you for a few minutes here. I was glad to um, introduce my friend Blake to you yesterday. We had a good session. Um, <clears throat> Blake is a good person. Um, even though he's like younger than my kids, um, he's a friend, and yet at the same time, there is an aspect of our relationship that it's like it's mentor like or parental, and there's nothing I can do about that really because of the nature of um, how I am, you know, which is you know, I'm the I'm the person that people in my life want to talk to, you know, when they have problems and when things are going good, and. Uh, so we have that kind of. I've been I've been um, playing music with Blake since about 2016. I think that's when I met him, and um, he's good. Um, here's a little bit of a, a little bit of yesterday. Some. Um, Incorporating, um, been trying to get this going actually for a while now with not just Blake but with the uh, saxophone player that we work with, James Ballerin. Those guys, um, Blake, as I mentioned, no, oh, I didn't pull it, I was going to pull the album Josh to show you, but he is part of a horn section that is in several bands here in Omaha and the Midwest. I mean, he's in high demand, he's a good player, and so is James. I've been trying to get these guys, um, you know, pinned down on some things, um, but we always um, get scattered because of their schedules, and finally getting Blake here to play at the house to record here, it's on, and um, planning to do another session today, he's supposed to come back today. Which is unusual because he's so, you know, so busy on the weekends. And then also with his wife. Well, she's his, may as well be his wife. So, excuse me. Another good thing happened yesterday. I called Homer's because I was looking on the in the, in the music news. And Kalela's new album was released yesterday. And I know that. Homer's carries the warp label. Not everything on it, but I've noticed that they carry the label. So I asked him, are you guys getting in the new Calella? And I'm ahead of them, you know, and I don't even work in record stores anymore. Because my main guy, Mark, didn't realize who she was and said, Oh, well, yeah, they sent me four of them. I didn't even know about I didn't I was kind of surprised. So I went straight down and grabbed this right away. The new Calella Raven. Look at that cover. Look at that bold image. And I love this. And I love this woman. And I love her stance. I love her energy where she's coming from. When I brought her up earlier, some other folks brought up some more singers. It's not that, people. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I could show you, I've been showing you records for 11 years, and I could show you records for another 11 years, and most of you would never still figure out what it is that I am really getting from the music, because, oh, well, you should listen to some of so-and-so, she's like that. No, usually what it is that I'm getting from the artist, the other person they talk about, nowhere near it. Kalela has that essence rare. It's also about where she's coming from. I like what she says. I started this process from the feeling of isolation and, and alienation I've always had as a black femme in dance music. And so, Raven is my first breath taken in the dark, an affirmation of black femme perspective in the midst of systemic erasure and the sound of vulnerability turned to power. This one's for y'all. I hear that and 
feel the power as well as the vulnerability. I love her voice. She can sing. I love her voice and I got the first edition clear vinyl. And I love this album. The opening track, Washed Away, I really feel it. I relate to her. She's. I really relate to the words, too, because she's talking about the pain of, of, and it is painful, relationships involve a lot of pain. And depending on the type of person you are, you're going to either have a, a, a better run than others. And because of my nature, I've not had a very good time with relationships, so which is why I'm single. I'd really rather not be bothered. Bottom line is, I don't care. I care, but I don't care. You know, in relationships, you get in these crazy situations and fights, and it's all about each other's minds. And I said, like, just fuck it. I, I can deal with my mind, and that's enough. So, sharing that, um, I picked up two other records in the used section yesterday at Homer's. Um, I was real happy, not with this one. This is okay. Software, I'm like I told you, I'm collecting all in innovative communication. Apparently, someone sold a collection to Homer's. They're putting it out piecemeal. They won't let me just buy it all at once. But, um... Every now and then they put out more of this stuff out of that collection. And there's a bunch of the stuff in the collection I already have, but the stuff I don't, I grab it. And this is one. I listened to this a little bit yesterday. It didn't really hit, hit, the, hit me good yesterday. I have to catch it another time. But another um, item that I wanted for my Bowie collection, when this happened on Record Store Day, I didn't, I passed on it. I didn't like the price. I didn't like the record store day price. Then this came in used to Homer's last week, but I missed it. I went down there, and someone already had it in the hold section. So I just let it alone. And I thought it was, well, I'd missed my chance. Well, I went down to get the Colella yesterday. Apparently, whoever put this in hold never picked it up. It was back in the use for 25 bucks, sealed. And this is a nice item. Um... It's the, the Bowie promo, and the story is in here. This is a nice package, nice package. Um, let me show you how they put it back in the paper here, if I can, right quick. This is one of those um, collector's item um, insider sort of um, items that was going around for years. I had never seen one, but... Um, so it comes like this, and you open the box, like I said, manila folder, and then the album, which is nicely wrapped in this paper. I mean, you know, it's nice, you know, they, you know they're into the presentation. And then this is apparently what the original was. This is, looks like it's written, but it's printed. But they're saying that supposedly the original copies of this, the David Bowie Rough Mix, was written on there by David Bowie. I don't know. It's still pretty cool. It's one-sided. This is really well-pressed. This sounds real good. And it's a good item to have. Some of these songs ended up coming out on Hunky Dory about that time. And others are alternate um, takes or slightly different mixes. And so it's a great item. And this has promo pictures of David from the time and the story about the uh, promo. I was real jazzed that this was still was that I was able to get that. So that's that's mainly what's on my mind to, to share with you this morning. There's always other things that kind of float through, you know, and I just they just oh, I'll share this again, more personal good news. Um before I get to that, I looked online and a musician who relocated to Omaha and I met through working with his wife saw my post about this and said, 
oh, I used to hang out with her in D.C. I'll have to get this. I love that, you know, almost personal connection to the woman, which I would never have expected. Pretty cool. So whatever I was going to say before that about personal stuff, I it, it's, it's just fluff stuff, you know. Um, yeah, um, I can do this. Okay, I, I can. So I don't want to do them all at the same time, but I did give a listen to another one of the Moon June releases last night. This is Bleed by Marcus Reuter. He's very prolific. Tim Motzer and Kenny Grohowski. I'm happy to report that this does not have a sameness to it, which I hope I'm not imparting that when I say that there is this realm that Moon June records are in. They're not all the same. This is pretty cool, and it does not sound anything like this that I showed you yesterday, which is led by Marcus Reuter, the anchor and burden. Nothing like this at all. This is um more directly melodic, sparse, more up in feel. It's instrumental, and it's really these guys play well together. This one has a, a melodic thing that starts to happen early in in the first track that really sells me. This is, yeah, yeah, this is good. Make no mistake, there's a reason why Leonardo Popkovic has dedicated his life to um, this label and these musicians. They're world class. They're doing, to me, they're doing something that is necessary. We need art. We need real music always to be played. We need real expression. Um, it's a disservice to how money kowtows to people's um, tendency tendency towards frivolity. How's that? The frivolous. I'm not downing it. I'm just saying this is our nature. We want to be happy. We don't want to have problems. We want to we want to have a gay old time, and. Anytime that we can be distracted or towards something that's pleasing or interesting or just downright shocking, we go for it. And so as a result, the marketplace is glutted with garbage in all forms, music, entertainment, fashion. So I applaud Leonardo Pavkovic and the musicians that he works with for creating real music, real art. I commend Leonardo for championing the continuing of this music because it's not a, a large part of the, the financial pie that these guys are working out of. It's very marginal. I'm always amazed, you know, that people are able to put stuff out. I'm glad they can. Keep it up. Okay, so that's what I got right now. As always, I enjoy hearing your thoughts. I enjoy you sharing your thoughts with me. Have a good Saturday.